what it's going to do when that fish grabs it and runs up the line or runs up the water column, it's going to go sideways. We're going to throw him in the lap rope, fry him up for later for lunch. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about something that you probably all fish with, slip bobber setup, live minnows, but more importantly, yesterday was about 92 degrees. This morning I woke up, it was 58. So we're gonna find out what these crappie are doing, even though this kind of cool front moved in here. Um, we didn't have any weather patterns last night, like no rain or anything like that, but it did get pretty cold. So, relative. We got live minnows here. And we got some leeches. Those are for walleye. Maybe later this morning, see if we can find some walleye, but right now we're gonna find some crappie on some brush piles. It's late July right now. These crappie are gonna be set up on their their deeper ranges of the summer patterns. This lake, they're gonna be about 19 to 22, 23 feet. Um, they're gonna be there probably till mid-September. Uh, once mid-September hits, the water temps start cooling. They're gonna push out to that 25 plus foot range. But uh, we're gonna go find some brush piles. I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can use to determine, uh, I guess, if these crappie are super aggressive versus if they're just a negative bite. There's something you can do with your split shot that you put on your slip bobber rig. It's gonna help you catch more fish. So let's go find some brush piles. The first thing is the Aberdeen hook. Um, I use these zone lock hooks. It's got a little bit of a bend. Helps keep the minnow on and doesn't that barb doesn't tear up the fish's mouth. Whenever I'm doing a, a live minnow rig, I'm tying a snell knot. So snell knot's pretty simple. You're gonna take the line, you're gonna put it through the eyelet the opposite way of the point of the hook. Okay, so the point of the hook is over here. I'm taking the tag line and bring it the other way. I'm gonna pull out like four to five inches. And what you're going to do is you're going to pinch that line just as the, the hook starts to bend. You're going to pinch it together with the shaft of the hook. You're going to take that tag end and then you're going to wrap around both the uh, shaft of the hook and that line that you have pinched and you wrap it four or five times. Now I'm going to pinch all that wrapped line together and if you notice there's a loop right on the bend of the hook there that we created from all this wrapping. I'm gonna take the tag end and bring it right back through that loop. I'm slowly pull the line tight. You wanna keep those loops that you wrapped around the shaft of the hook below the eyelet of the hook. So you kind of pull it together and then it just slides up right beneath the eyelet of the hook. And there you go. Now the reason this is important, I'm gonna cut the tag end here real quick. reason this is important is if you notice the lines going this way through the eyelet of the hook so when you set the hook the line uses that eyelet as leverage to put that hook into that fish's mouth that's why I use a snell knot so this little trick of determining whether these fish are gonna be super aggressive or it's gonna be more of a negative bite when you put your split shot on pinch it pinch it on the line typically like six to eight inches above the hook is pretty general if it's a super aggressive bite, this allows that minnow to run and trigger a bite. If it's either a quick strike or there it's, a, it's a negative bite where these fish, maybe they grab the minnow and start rising up the water column or they're just grabbing it, popping it and letting it go real quick. You wanna put that split shot either just above the hook, like an inch or two above the hook or if it's a super negative bite, you put it all the way right on top of the eyelet because when a fish grabs it and tries to run up the water column with it, that bobber you got, this guy, what it's gonna do when that fish grabs it and runs up the line, or runs up the water column, it's gonna go sideways, and that's a negative bite. So that's how you know you gotta, gotta strike on a negative bite. So now let's uh, set up on these brush piles and catch some fish. All right, so now that we're tied on, I got my buoy marked here. There's actually a couple of different brush piles with some fish on them here. So this is where my buoy is, right over the top of that brush pile right there. And for starters, we're gonna just assume these crappie are still aggressive like yesterday when I was out here. There's some debate whether you hook these through the back or the, the nose. I'm gonna start, start off hooking through the back. It gives a little more natural look and motion and they wriggle like crazy. There's a fish, just running with it. Very crappie. Well, looks like they want the aggressive pattern. 
That was the second little drop of the bobber there. He'd be a, let's measure him. See if he's a nine. If he's a nine, I might keep him. Oh yeah. He is a nine, nine and three quarters almost. Nine and a half, nine and three quarters. Yeah, we're gonna throw him in the lab well. Fry him up for later, for lunch. This is the one thing about fishing with minnows is you're constantly re-rigging them, but it is a surefire way to get get crappie in the boat. Oh, there he is. Got him. There we go. Move that weight down a little bit. Still give that minnow some, some room to wiggle around. These are some decent keepers. I think we got another nine incher here. Be a solid frying pan fish. Actually, we're gonna throw him in the deep fryer. Come on, dude. Yep, another nine. He's about nine and a quarter. He's coming home. And I need a new minnow. Just little adjustments like that. Help trigger those strikes. Ooh. I slid that, that split shot to about a couple inches above, uh, about an inch and a half, two inches above my, my hook there. And uh, it helps me see that strike a little bit better. It's such a quick strike on some of these fish. Well, dang. There he is, got him that time. Ooh, that's a bit of a fighter. Yep. He's a bit of a fighter for a little guy. Let's see what he is. Another nine and a nine and a half. He's coming home. He's running with it. Man, that was a tricky bite. But that's another keeper. Another keeper. He was just sitting there holding it. He popped it once and then he just he didn't want to take it down any further. Oh yeah, another nine and three quarter. There's nine, he's almost 10. There he is. I think that's gonna be your, our last keeper for the day. Oh, oh, keepers. I think he'll go nine. Lost my bobber there for a second. I don't know how that happened. Yep, he's a nine. He's gonna go, he's a little over nine. All right, well, we are, this is the uh, brand new Bayou Classic, made right here, well not here, made in the US in Louisiana. And uh, I did catch some additional bluegill, so I'm gonna cut those up, put them in some batter, and then we're gonna fry this thing up, turn this thing on and uh, fry them up. I forgot to pick up some hush puppy stuff because uh, last time, I think it was in North Texas, had some hush puppies in this thing, really good. So not, not cheap, but highly recommend if you fry a lot of food, this is what you want. Um, I've seen it in Mississippi when I traveled there. I've seen it in Texas, Arkansas. Like this is, this is what you want. This is a four gallon model, got four gallons in there comes with the two frying trays but yeah and the tent gauge definitely something you want we're gonna go batter some fish up throw them in the bag and then throw them on those uh, batter racks and dip them in the oil I realized my enthusiasm was a little lacking the first part of the video. 
Uh, it was a little early in the morning yet, but uh, slip bobber fishing with live minnows, it's, it's amazing. And crappie can't resist minnows pretty much year round. That's a setup you can use spring, summer, fall, winter, and catch some crappie. But enough talking, let's go fry some fish. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All fried up, nice and, some nice golden crispies. I'm gonna go edit this video, have myself some nice uh, bluegill and crappie. Cool thing about, I forgot to mention, cool thing about this, there's a there's a V-shaped bottom to this thing. So we can see from the backside. See, there's that V-shaped bottom. So all those crumbs that normally in any other fish fryer that would get stuck in the oil, they fall to that so you can reuse the oil. Which is the main reason I bought this thing. I don't know how many times you can reuse oil, but that thing is awesome. I'm gonna fry a lot of food with that. So appreciate you watching as always. I will link the entire fishing setup in the video description. I'll even link that, you guys can check it out. It is not cheap. Just a heads up, these are expensive, but they're gonna last a lifetime. American made right there in Louisiana. So appreciate you watching as always. You got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I'm gonna go eat some of my golden crispies. We'll see ya.